Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to True Crime Cast. As always, I'm your host, Buzz Bradley, and in this episode, we are going to be looking into all the craziness that has been coming out about Brian Koberger over the last month or so and recap everything, including this big thing that came out about uh, a totally unexpected person in this story, which would be Bethany Funk or Funke or however you say her last name. But no one thought much of her other than an afterthought. But apparently, the de defense thinks she is the key to getting uh, Brian Koberger off. But we'll visit that at the end. Right now, I want to ex first explain, we haven't been on, we haven't posted a video here for a little while. Um, over the years, we've had four dogs. Uh, for 20 years, basically, we've had about four dogs in our house. And we have now lost three of those dogs. And by the way, here are my four dogs. And uh, we've lost three of them in the last three or four years. And now we're down to our final dog, Lily. Lily. And in the last uh, few weeks, she's kind of become on hospice uh, care. And because of this, we have been concentrating on her and nothing else. Last week, we actually thought we were going to put her down and she miraculously rebounded and is doing great, which also now allows me to do this video for y'all. So here we go. We're going to jump right into this thing with Koberger and I'm going to get y'all updated. And hopefully if I get more time, then I will do some other videos as well. I have a Gabby, uh, Gabby Petito one already done. I just can't get it edited enough, but I wanted to get this out because I think this will be a little easier. So with that said, let's go. So first off, let's visit, uh, and, oh, and Brian Goldberger is innocent until proven guilty. He is innocent as the day is long, and I apologize if I offend anyone. Please stop emailing and texting and, and contacting me about how I'm horrible to think Brian Koberger is guilty. Uh, everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but for the context of this video, uh, most of what he has done and they have found points him being guilty. So we're going to take it for granted that he is most likely guilty. However, he is innocent until proven guilty, but don't get mad because I'm going to basically be, you know, he's, he's basically going to look pretty guilty with everything I have to say. So with that being said, let's go right now to uh, Reddit and Facebook and all these other places where people think Brian Koberger is innocent. And not only do people think he's innocent, but they are like, they fight and go crazy after people if you say he is not innocent. And there are people who not only just say he's not, that he's innocent, saying that he was set up, and then there are people who are giving him money and sending him commissary. And there are women who want to date him. There are women that want to marry him. I mean, it is crazy how many people think he is innocent. They think he's been set up. They think that he, he is going to be exonerated and think anyone like me who thinks he actually did it and committed these crimes are the enemy and monsters, which we aren't. He is innocent until proven guilty. However, all the evidence keeps piling up and more and more keeps coming out even with the gag order and he appears to be more guilty than innocent but only time will tell so first of all that was what i wanted to cover with all the people online who think he is innocent and they love him and they keep giving him money and presents and gifts and probably naked pictures and everything else but there that's the first thing the second thing that has come to light ever since this came out was that brian koberger's sisters fired. They both got fired from their job. Now, they did not commit these crimes. Brian Koberger is innocent until proven guilty, yet both his sisters got fired from their jobs just by being um, associated with him. And was it fair? Was it not fair? Who knows? But they both got fired because of what he is accused of doing. So let's cover what's happened to Brian Koberger since he went in jail. Because there's been a lot of, you know, whoa, he's doing this and he's talking to this guard and he's talking to that guard. First of all, there are 19 prisoners in the area that he is in and all of them are secluded from him. So if there are any pres prisoners saying, oh, I spoke to him, he said this, or oh yeah, he said he did that. No, all that's untrue. He is not around anyone. The only one he has contact with are the chaplain and people like in the church area and then the guards. That's it. So if a guard came out and said, yeah, he said he killed him, he chopped them all up. Well, that you could believe, maybe, but not just all this other stuff you're hearing. This is not, this, this is all bull, to say the least. Now, we did find out that he has found Jesus. 
or God or something since being in prison or jail. He goes to church every Sunday and he gets out and he does, you know, do, you know, he talks all that. Uh, but other than that, he stays pretty quiet um, to himself. And he, he, because he has no choice, he is in a solitary confinement kind of situation. So anyone who says he's, he's given up this information, he's not. Which brings us to the next thing. Is Brian Koberger a serial killer? Well, that's what the FBI are looking into now. So the FBI has something called VICAB. It is a, it is a basically a database that they put in every single, it's Google basically, it's crime Google. They put in the suspects, their heights, their weights, what they did, how they entered, anything you can imagine about every single crime out there. And what this does is they can punch in, you know, Brian Kohlberger, which that won't matter, but they could put suspect entered through this door, did this, used this weapon, and left this evidence, and this was his blood type, and all these other things. And they can take that and they can look at other crimes that have happened and see if he was possibly connected and see if there's a connection, if he was a serial killer out there. Most likely not much happened out in Idaho or anything, but they're more worried about Pennsylvania because he was a security guard a couple places, he worked a few places, and he was familiar with that area for moving across country. So there is a possibility he had already done this at home and moved out there and did it, but we'll see. I don't know, it's kind of a stretch, but they are, they are uh, looking into that. So that's one thing. So another thing that has come out is that the FBI and the police and the prosecutors and all that, they have gone back all the way to 2021. In fact, January of 2021 with TikTok and Google and some other companies to see if he somehow had already contacted them way back then. So they're, they're, they actually are thinking that maybe he had some sort of contact or ran into him at some point back in 2021 and may have been actually speaking to him prior to 2022 when all this happened. So they're looking all the way back to that uh, time frame, which seems interesting because if he met him there, there could be a whole backstory none of us know about. But right now, that's what they're doing. They are researching everything and trying to figure out if he actually contacted them a couple years ago, not just recently. Which then brings us to our next thing which is he was contacting these girls on Instagram, at least one of them. He was contacting on Instagram. He may have contacted all of them on Instagram, but there was apparently one that he was DMing and one that he was concentrating on that did not reciprocate because maybe they just didn't know or they weren't friends or she just didn't even have a clue that he had contacted her. But apparently there was that connection, uh, which brings us to the next thing. Ethan. Ethan was 100% a innocent victim that all the research they're doing and everything they're pulling and everything is the three girls. The three girls internet, the three girls TikTok, the three girls Google, the three girls everything is what they are concentrating on. Ethan is not being concentrated at all. So we know that he was 100% an innocent bystander that unfortunately, because he was there in the house with his girlfriend, that is why he ended up dead. No other reason whatsoever. So. Jumping to the next thing that we found out in the last month or so, the evidence they found in his car. And when I say evidence, I mean the ID. They found one of the girl's IDs in his car. Now, people are going crazy with this and they're trying to jump to all these things like, well, maybe he was out at a bar and he found her ID on the ground and she was so pretty. He went to her house multiple times wanting to return it and he didn't want to confront her during the day. So that's why he went at nighttime. That's why his phone always pinged by their house. And he was just going to drop it in their mailbox because, you know, he's a good Samaritan. He found her ID. He was going to turn it in. Um, there's another another theory out there that he had gone on a date with a girl, one of the girls, and somehow throughout the night he figured out a way, like she went to the bathroom and he stole her ID that night. And then there is the most likely thing, which is this is his trophy. Whoever he stole the ID from is probably the person he went there to kill. And then everyone else was just collateral damage, you know, in the whole thing. But the fact that he had that one ID that tells you that was probably his target and his main victim and everything else just all went to hell on him while he was there. Uh, allegedly, got to get that in there. Allegedly that he did these things. Um, 
So that is where we are right now with these IDs. I mean, he has the ID of one of the victims in his vehicle that he drove from uh, Idaho all the way, or Washington State, all the way back to Pennsylvania, and then still had it, didn't hide it, didn't, like, didn't anything. It's crazy because, I mean, he's, he's a student of criminology. He should have known having that ID was going to get him screwed if they, if they found it. So, so the ID thing was just bonkers. Um, and I don't know how that doesn't just, like that's the smoking gun basically in this case. But that brings us to two other things. One, um, which I don't know how important this is, but apparently one of the police officers, it's a, apparently there's a Brady list. Um, and what the Brady list is, is this is a list of police officers that have had other issues or are being investigated or have done things that have gotten them investigated on on uh, during you know their time on different police forces. Well, apparently one of the police that are investigating this crime is on that Brady list. So the defense is wanting that guy's name and they want to know what he's done and what he touched and all that stuff. And that's just one more way for the defense to shoot some holes into uh, the prosecuting attorney's uh, case against Brian. Which now brings us to the biggest thing on this video, and that is Bethany Funk. Bethany Funk is refusing to... Uh, so J June 26th of 2023 is the preliminary hearing. And now everyone thinks this is going to be the big thing. This is not. This is just going to be two or three days of them going over all the evidence and what they have and making sure that this can go on to trial. Um, but Bethany Funk, who has now moved back to Nevada and has no intentions of coming back to Idaho, she is refusing to take the stand in that, that preliminary trial. She says she has absolutely nothing to offer, that she was sleeping downstairs, she heard nothing, and has nothing to do with this case whatsoever, and wants to have nothing to do with this case whatsoever. However, the defense team is saying that she is the key to proving his innocence, and that she must uh, be there, and she must be questioned, because she will be able to prove that he is innocent. Now, this, what would say, well, this the sixth character in this, in this story um, who no one has really paid attention to is now all of a sudden become the, the pinnacle of this case, at least in the defense's eyes. Whereas in her eyes, she's like, I was just sleeping. I have nothing to do with this. But the defense has the right to call her. And the fact that she's fighting so hard seems kind of odd. I know most people think Dylan Mortensen has something to do with this or she should really be what the, the focus is on. But apparently now, Bethany Funk might actually be the key to this case. Maybe it's her ID. Maybe maybe he, she was the actual target. Maybe he was looking for her and never did find her. Who knows? But regardless of however it is, Bethany Funk is now the key to this case in the defense's eyes. And they're saying that her testimony will exonerate Brian Cober. So there you have it. That's pretty much it. I mean, I know there was a few other little things that popped up here and there, and there's lots of speculation. There's lots of crazy people who think he's innocent, and there's lots of people who fry him now, and, and people are talking about the firing squad. Oh, God, we're gonna, they're going to shoot him with the firing squad when it's done, and they're, they're not going to have the, the things for, you know, whatever. <laughs> All this has been crazy, but we'll get a few answers in June, which is only a couple months away now. And hopefully we get way more answers, you know, moving forward. But that is it. You are brought up to date. Hopefully I'll be able to keep giving you these updates and hopefully get move on to some more cases that you'll all want to hear about. But as of right now, um, you are caught up and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching as always. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, let me know in the comments if you like what you see here. Have a great day or night or whatever it may be. Thank you.